If Joseph Smith wasn't motivated by money, then why did he die wealthy? To preface this, in 1842, Congress passed a lenient bankruptcy law, which they had to rescind months later, when $440 million of liabilities were wiped clean for $44 million in assets. Joseph Smith filed for bankruptcy that same year and cleared $73,000 in debts. Today, that is the equivalent of $2.5 million. And by his own account, Joseph Smith had racked up an additional $70,000 worth of debt after his 1842 bankruptcy filing. So including his previously cleared debt, this would bring his total debt to the equivalent of $4.9 million today. In Nauvoo, Joseph Smith purchased around 25 plots of land for the amount of $2 per acre. He then sold that same land for $500 per acre. And in the history of the church on February 13th of 1843, it was recorded that Joseph Smith spent the evening at the house of Elder Orson Hyde. Joseph remarked that, Those brethren who came here having money and purchased without the church and without counsel must be cut off. So Joseph Smith is essentially threatening members that if they didn't purchase through him or without his counsel, he would excommunicate them. And in reaction to Joseph Smith's statement, one of the brothers present named Brother Dixon, who was quite wealthy, appeared in great wrath. Yeah, no kidding. I would be too. To reinforce this idea, in the Nauvoo Neighbor, published on December 20th of 1843, it reads, Let all the brethren therefore, when they move into Nauvoo, consult President Joseph Smith, the trustee and trust, and purchase their lands of him. This means that Joseph Smith had a monopoly on the purchase and sale of all Nauvoo real estate. On December 12th of 1843, Joseph Smith was awarded by the Nauvoo City Council, led by himself, to have the sole right to sell as much liquor as he wanted in the city limits. We don't really know how lucrative this was or how long it lasted, but it is very clear that Joseph Smith used his political power and influence as the prophet and mayor of Nauvoo to take financial advantage of the residents. So now let's look at the assets of Joseph Smith. He owned three homes, the Nauvoo house, the mansion house, and his homestead house, and he owned at least three farms, the Quincy property and two unnamed farms as stated by Brigham Young. After Joseph Smith's death, Brigham Young claimed that Joseph's wife, Emma, inherited $50,000 in city property, which is the equivalent of $1.7 million today. Joseph Smith also owned two steamboats, which during the 1840s were huge assets. The Nauvoo steamboat was purchased on credit by Joseph and others at the amount of $4,866. And the Maid of Iowa steamboat was built by Dan Jones for $4,000. After Dan was baptized, Joseph became a partner with Dan Jones in the Maid of Iowa, and he later purchased it fully in 1844. Many of the workers on the steamboats were charged a majority of their paycheck from Joseph back as tithing, which allowed Joseph to run the steamboats with very cheap labor. Also, some of his friends purchased mummies and Egyptian papyri for $2,400, and then donated them to Joseph Smith. Today, that amount would be around $85,000. Also, Lucy charged 25 cents to see the mummies and papyri, and today that's the equivalent of $8.81. So there's really no accurate way to quantify these assets in today's values, but it's very clear that Joseph Smith died wealthy.